I'll get there as soon as I can. I'll get back to it then. Open world games are a dime a dozen nowadays, and it feels like they always advertise themselves by size. They release trailers with wide shots of mountains, tundras, and forests. They tweet facts like 10 times bigger than Skyrim and more cities than the state of Iowa. And they brag about a playtime of weeks instead of mere hours. The developers of open world games are under the delusion that the most important measurement in their genre is size. How big the world map is, how many NPCs are in it, how long it takes to hit platinum achievement completionist status. But they're wrong. Bigger isn't necessarily better. An open world game isn't about scale, it's about exploration and immersion. The best open worlds are the ones that feel alive. The Yakuza series is an incredible example of the open world genre done right. And it does so in an unexpected way. The game worlds themselves are pretty small, taking place in Tokyo neighborhoods with maybe 10 city blocks in total. You see the same people and the same buildings every single day. And there's no major time skips or environmental changes to mix up the world. It's a fairly static setting that is a far cry from the endless terrain of most open world games. And yet, packed into that single urban locale is a wealth of gameplay and story. There are dozens of buildings with playable interiors, from the multiple convenience stores, to the arcades with working machines, to the sushi restaurant with health-boosting meals. And there are hidden spaces as well, like the speakeasy-esque black market shop and the underground catfighting ring. And I haven't even mentioned owning and running businesses, which adds another layer of complexity and interaction with your surroundings. The physical environments of the Yakuza series, despite being so minuscule compared to other open world games, becomes more than just a space in which the action occurs. As you explore its many alleyways and neon lit storefronts, you develop a connection with the buildings and streets themselves. Each of them is initially presented as an opportunity to explore and discover more about life in Tokyo. However, as the game progresses, exploration turns into comfort as you visit again and again the locations and activities you enjoy the most. But a city is nothing without the people living within it. And while most open world games are satisfied with a large population of stale NPCs and just a sprinkling of quest givers, Yakuza approaches it differently. The games are full of fleshed out characters who are trying to survive in a bustling city. Throughout the game, you repeatedly interact with them while they struggle at work or wander the streets or unwind in a karaoke bar. As you help these people with their problems and watch them grow, you develop a deep bond with them. And through that bond, they start to feel less like NPCs and more like neighbors. I have never lived in Tokyo, but because of the Yakuza series, I feel like I have. It's both of those connections to the world itself and to the people living within it that makes for a great open world game. I don't want to denigrate the massive amount of work that developers do, but it feels like making a modern open world game is easy. You create a big empty world space with multiple climates, slap down cookie cutter outposts slash villages, polish one or two unique areas, and then ship it to retailers. Just Cause, Far Cry, and many others suffer from this. The Yakuza series is a strong rebuttal to that type of world building. It places an emphasis on creating a space that feels handcrafted and interconnected. Adding nooks and crannies and filling them with compelling characters and unique quests and exciting activities brings so much life to the game that getting to explore it becomes the reward. After all, what's the point of making an open world game if it isn't worth exploring? Oh, hello there. You've caught me practicing my reading. Boy, I sure wish I wasn't illiterate. Clearly you've enjoyed another Subpixel video. If you could like, comment, or subscribe, it lets us and it lets YouTube know that our content is worth watching. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to pretending.